What's up, YouTube? Welcome, or welcome back to the Saving Men's Lives Network. Today, fellas, I wanted to do a video which was suggested to me by, and shout out to Inui Blue, hope I pronounced that properly, who brought to my attention a man who I never heard of before, a man I never met, but whose life mission parallels to my own and unfortunately ended in tragedy. The man in question is a Canadian man by the name of Earl Silverman. I'm ashamed of myself for not having heard about him sooner, but hopefully by the end of this video, we will all be much more informed as to who he was, what it was he was trying to do and hopefully what we can do to follow in his footsteps. Mr. Silverman was a Canadian citizen and me as an American, I just hadn't heard of him up until a few days ago. He was involved in, and oh, really quickly, <laughs> YouTube is very, very funny about certain words. You use certain words in your videos and the algorithm will strike you down. It'll, it'll shadow ban you. It'll hide you or outright get you demonetized. I don't want to deal with those headaches. So I'm going to be using some code language to get the point across. I'll be pronouncing a word A B use. You spell it out, you know which one I'm talking about. So, with that said and understood, he was the victim of domestic hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat from his ex-wife. And he did everything he could to try and handle this the right way. He tried to tell the police he was mocked and ridiculed. The politicians didn't want to hear what he had to say despite the bruises and contusions on his face and other parts of his body. He tried to seek help from the ABU shelters in his area. And they were told that not only do they only help women and children, but that he as a man only had access to anger management courses, but not shelter. Frustrated, he finally retaliated against his ex-wife. And of course, she then played the victim, as they often do. You see, fellas, the problem he kept running into head first was the fact that he was coming face to face with the entirely fraudulent Duluth model of domestic V word, which states and is taught to police departments all over the world, unfortunately, that if there's a confrontation of a physical nature between a man and a woman, the man must be seen as the perpetrator and the aggressor despite who's actually responsible for the interaction. For this reason, Mr. Silverman ran into slam door, into slam door, into slam door in his attempt to escape his situation for a better tomorrow. So what did he end up doing? Well, what he tried to do was he tried to start something to help other men in this similar situation. He started the Family of Men Society and he, he wanted to open up his own refuge for men to come who had been through what he had been through. But he couldn't get any help. He couldn't get any money from the private corporations. He couldn't get any money from the government like the other women's shelters get in the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars every year. He couldn't get nickels to rub together. And so eventually he had to close down his shelter and he sold it for pennies on a dollar. I can't imagine the helplessness he must have felt to be a tax paying citizen and the entire government and the police that you pay had nothing but contempt for the pain he was feeling and the literal AB use he was suffering at the hands of a woman who professed to love him at the altar however many years beforehand. 
when he sold his house, he sold it to a gentleman by the name of Stephen Howitt. And he hanged himself the very next day. Mr. Howitt came by to see the property again and he found Mr. Silverman hanging it, but they couldn't save him. He had lost too much oxygen to his brain. This man's sad legacy, trying to do what he could, trying to operate outside of a system he was paying for that failed him at every turn, cost him everything. And I would say this, fellas, on this day, if you are currently in a situation where you're dealing with a woman who has put her hands on you, maybe attacked you with weapons, maybe she's picked up things and thrown them at you, maybe she's damaged your vehicle or other personal property, you need to fight the natural male impulse to protect women from consequences and you need to put her on papers. You need to put her on papers from anything from a, from a, a, an order of child support. If you're the primary caretaker, she hasn't paid a dime. Apologize for the Jets, fellas, we're near the air base. You need to put her on a restraining order. You need to record every conversation that you and she has if you live in a two-party state, that is, or you ever live in a two, I don't know if they have two-party provinces up in Canada, I've never been, but you guys need to find a way, you definitely need to screenshot all your text interactions for sure. Keep track of everything. Take photographs of any bruises and contusions you have. If you can get video evidence, all the better. In fact, I would recommend for you guys who are stupid enough to cohabit with women, I recommend that you go on Amazon or to Best Buy, anywhere you can get discount security cameras and put them up around your house. Put them up in places where she's prone to do the things she's done to you before in the past. If that's the bedroom, so be it. If it's the bathroom, so be it. If it's the kitchen, the hallways, you name it. And you need to have a place to store that footage off-site, if nothing more than on the thumb drive. So this all can be archived and you can make your case. I want you gentlemen to be safe. I want you gentlemen to understand it as far back as the Old Testament, even in the book of Proverbs. I want to paraphrase Proverbs chapter 25, verse 24. It is better to live on the corner of your roof than to live in an entire house with a contentious woman. Contentious meaning argumentative, pain in the ass, nag, who just might also be putting her hands and other objects on you. It's better for you to live on the corner of your roof where you could sneeze and fall off and hurt yourself <laughs> or kill yourself than to live under that roof with a woman who is going out of her way to be the bane of your existence. My condolences to all those who loved Earl Silverman, whatever family, all of his friends. Shout out to Aaron Pizzi, who is a woman who started the very first battered women's shelter back in the 70s over in England. You know, she, to her credit, Got to give credit where it's due. She took it upon herself to honor Mr. Silverman. And for that reason, she's hated by the F.E. Eminence. Because Miss Pizzi was very clear that she said women commit just as much A.B. use as men do when it comes to those types of relationships. That goes against the narrative. That defeats the we are victims at all times and only men can do bad things narrative. And it's for that reason Aaron Pizzi is not a household name the same way Susan G. Komen would be or the same way Florence Nightingale would be. Salute to her. Salute to her and her mission, which coincided with Earl Silverman's mission. Salute to her for calling him a martyr of the Canadian legal system. 
because she's exactly right. Every now and again, fellas, we get an ally and it's way too few and far between. So shout out to her. For the rest of my guys, I just wanna say, fellas, we have to learn to start demanding more. For those of you guys still dating, for those of you guys who are engaged or married, who watch my content, thank you for being here. Learn to value yourself enough to where what happened to our dearly departed brother does not happen to you. Rest in peace to Earl Silverman. We must fight on in his absence. That's it, that's my time. Like the video, comment down below, and subscribe and hit the bell, fellas. Share this content with a friend you think could benefit from the content we put out here. And um, if you see your brother going through it, talk to him. Because he may be dying on the inside. And the last thing we want is have him dying on the outside. Never let your brother suffer in silence when the truth can set him free. Till next time, fellas, this is the Saving Men's Lives Network. Plenty more to come.